Until Paul shows up, I think I'm the most learned man of the Jews in Ephesus, and I'm treated as such. I wouldn't be at least a little proud of this. Taught about Jesus accurately. That was the description of me. It was from Luke's writings, a learned man himself. So how am I able to teach accurately about Jesus? Especially since I'm from Alexandria. That's Egypt, nowhere near Jerusalem. Great question. And is teaching accurately the only thing required to teach how Jesus taught? Another great question. Apollos was highly regarded for his knowledgeable and accurate teachings about Jesus. But is accuracy the most important requirement for teaching about the Lord? I am introduced in the Bible with the following verses. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And though he knew only the baptism of John, he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately. Fervor and accuracy, it's great to be remembered for. Let's start with the word accurate. Three times in the Bible, the word appears in reference to scales and weights, that God demands to be accurate and honest. Twice, it refers to the Sanhedrin, supposedly wanting Paul to testify more accurately. The only other time it's used in the Bible is in reference to the way that I teach about Jesus. Alexandria was the capital of Egypt, the center of learning for the entire world. To be called a learned man from Alexandria, it's obviously an honor of the highest order. To be described as having a thorough knowledge of the scriptures, the ultimate compliment for a Jew like me. How did it happen that the center of learning in Africa had thorough knowledge of the scriptures and also understood this new way of the Lord? Christians were being persecuted in Jerusalem. They left and went all over the Roman Empire. Many came to Alexandria. They taught about Jesus and how he is the Messiah or Savior promised in the Old Testament. I wanted to learn more. I had to learn more. It's how learned people work. So I traveled hundreds and hundreds of miles from Alexandria to Ephesus for one reason, Paul. I heard that Paul was to return to Ephesus to be with some friends, friends he left behind in Ephesus at the end of his second missionary journey. I wanted to learn all I could from Paul. He studied with the best teachers in the world. In fact, as I've read in Paul's letter to the Galatians, his first teacher was Jesus, who taught him by revelation. Saying I have a thorough knowledge of the scriptures means that I know the Old Testament well. Very little of the New Testament has been written at the time I reach Ephesus, and it will be many centuries before it's compiled as you have it today. Dr. Luke's description of me says that I had been instructed in the way of the Lord. With my penchant for accuracy, I'm convinced that teaching about Jesus accurately fulfills the requirements to live. It is abundantly clear to me that it is a righteous circle. Learn more about Jesus. Teach accurately what I learn. Follow the teachings of Jesus accurately. Learn more about Jesus. Teach accurately what I learn. You get the picture. I speak with great fervor, and I love to teach in the synagogue of Ephesus. There's nothing like speaking boldly about Jesus. One day, I'm teaching in the synagogue, and I find out that Paul's friends are in the audience listening to me. I can't help it. I try to impress them. Like, try really hard. I conclude the teaching, and who is waiting to see me afterward? Paul's friends and star students. Priscilla and Aquila. Aquila and Priscilla, married, lived in Corinth. They left Rome because all the Jews had been exiled from the city by Emperor Claudius, tent makers. Paul lived with them, worked with them. They heard him teach in the synagogue as he tried to convert people to the new way of the Lord, to become Christians. Paul taught Priscilla and Aquila about Jesus. And whether he liked it or not, they taught him how to deal with ordinary people who had not been raised as learned Jews in Israel. Let's just say Paul was a little rough around the edges. He clearly learned as much from them as they learned from him. They had insight that Paul did not have. They lived and worked together for about a year and a half. Then Paul decided to conclude his second missionary journey and go back to Jerusalem. 
He left Corinth and he took Priscilla and Aquila with him, then left them in Ephesus to anchor the church there. They came to hear me speak. Yes, they invite me to their house. Awesome. We eat, we talk. I could feel the kindness literally seeping out of both of them. Their words are honey-coated, and I accept them so easily. I'm not sure how long we talk, but I finally realized that this is an advanced education in the way of the Lord. They're like professors in a doctorate program. I conclude that while it is important for me to be accurate in teaching about Jesus, it's not enough. I need to learn to teach with kindness, with mercy, compassion, with love, just as Jesus did. It's not just the facts. Jesus demonstrated the incredible combination of teaching truth with love. Hard sayings with the heart of a shepherd towards his sheep. I realize another important thing. I have been teaching through my own power and my own intellect. Priscilla and Aquila show me how to teach through the power of the Holy Spirit. I've been teaching accurately, but not adequately. I'm humbled. People are precious children of God, and part of the teaching process requires the patience and persistence that Jesus himself lived out. As recorded in the book of Acts chapter 18, Priscilla and Aquila explain to me the way of God more adequately. I realized that Holy Spirit brought me to Ephesus, not to meet Paul, but to meet Priscilla and Aquila. I followed them around like a puppy, soaking in the way of God like a sponge. It's a challenge for me, because I've always exclusively valued facts over people. I make a lot of progress. How much progress? After a few weeks, we decide that I should move on to somewhere else to spread the good news of Jesus. I'm overwhelmed with humility when they suggest I first go to Corinth and the surrounding area, the very place where they met Paul and came to believe in Jesus. Weeks later, I stand before the synagogue in Corinth in a public debate. From the scriptures, I prove that Jesus is the Messiah. And it's clear to everyone in the synagogue that I won the debate. But as I look around the room, I realize that I won an empty victory. No hearts have been changed. Priscilla's sweet, infectious smile flashes in my memory. <laughs> I change tactics. I start teaching the way of God more adequately, with love, relying on words from the Holy Spirit. I even smile. Brothers and sisters, I have proven Jesus is our long-awaited Savior, but now, I want to tell you why this is good news for you and your children. If you will follow him, you get to enter eternal life starting today. You get to live as his sons and daughters. God loves you. Our God is merciful and wants all to come to repentance.